The year is 2017, and while video games have come far from their 8-bit arcade origins, their treatment of women hasn't come far at all. We all know that female characters are horribly sexualized, from clothing to camera angles. But before you can even begin to sexualize a female character, you must include them in the first place, something which video game developers seem to have a hard time doing. The main reason for the lack of female characters comes down to the target audience for video games. Most developers create their games with male gamers aged 15 to 35 in mind, as they're believed to make up the majority of gamers. Many games feature a middle-aged, white, male protagonist to appeal to this audience, with one, maybe two, female supporting characters. However, as of 2016, 41% of people who play video games are female, yet we still see hardly any female characters to reflect this. Let's jump straight into the numbers. I took the top games from each year for the past 10 years and tallied up the amount of female characters and the amount of male characters. The resulting numbers are pretty sad. I defined the top games using sales figures and critical acclaim and only looked at the AAA non-handheld games, basically the biggest players in the field. I also omitted any games that contained only online multiplayer as they don't have well-established characters within the game itself. All of the data analyzed comes from within the game's story campaigns. In 2016, we had a total of 50 characters, with 12 of them being female. That comes out to 24% of all characters being female. In 2015, we had a total of 125 characters, with 46 females. That comes out to 37%. In 2014, we had 61 characters with 20 females, ending up with 33%. In 2013, we had 58 characters with 21 females, with a percentage of 36 in the end. In 2012, we had 34 females out of 113 characters, with a percentage of 30. In 2011, we had 124 characters with 40 females, coming out to 32%. In 2010, we had 34 female characters out of a total of 114 characters, rounding out to 30%. In 2009, we had 71 characters, 21 being female, for a total of 30%. In 2008, we had 12 female characters out of 51 characters, ending up with 24%. And in 2007, we had 82 characters with 26 females, coming out to 32%. As you can see, on average, female characters make up about 30% of a game's cast. There were only 9 games in the past 10 years that had an equal number of male and female characters, and only 2 games that had more female characters than male characters. Thankfully, none of the games analyzed had zero female characters. Women aren't only disincluded from the cast, however. They're often ignored when it comes to cover art, too. This is because of the idea that, if a 20-year-old male saw a video game on a shelf with a woman on the cover, they would assume it must be a game for girls and therefore not suitable for them to play. In other words, developers think that men are shallow and dim-witted. The only times we see women on the cover art of games is when they're the main protagonist. Well, mostly. A recent trend in gaming, particularly with role-playing games, or RPGs for short, is to allow the player to choose their own character. Sometimes this involves creating a completely original character from the ground up. Other times it comes down to choosing between a male and a female character. However, despite the fact that you can play as a woman in these games, and that a female character is potentially the main protagonist, the cover art and marketing completely ignore them. Bethesda, the developer of the widely successful Fallout and Elder Scrolls games, had never featured a female character in a trailer before Fallout 4 in 2015. And even then, the majority of the promotional trailers and artwork featured the male protagonist. Bioware, the developers of the Mass Effect and Dragon Age series, has never featured the female protagonist option in any of their trailers, covers, or artwork for Dragon Age. For Mass Effect, fans had to plead with the developers just to get the one and only trailer featuring the female lead prior to the release of the third game. Yes, it took them three games to acknowledge that there was the option to play as more than just a middle-aged white male with a slight stubble. 
Mass Effect's female protagonist only appeared on one of the series' game covers, on the back side of the collector's edition for the third title. The ability to create your own character aside, females are almost never seen as the main protagonists of a game. In fact, of all the games I analyzed over the past 10 years, only six of them had a set female lead, not including the games that let you choose your own gender. This is tied to the idea that women are simply less powerful than men. Showing a woman in a leading role, especially since most video games are at least partially of the action genre, showcases females as being strong and independent, and capable of standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with their male counterparts. Since the target audience for video games is men, developers fear that a female lead would resonate poorly with male players and make them feel emasculated by having a strong woman in the lead. The success of long-running franchises like Tomb Raider and the newly released yet critically acclaimed Horizon Zero Dawn completely disproved this myth. Even more rare than the female protagonist is the female antagonist. Only five of the analyzed games prior contained female antagonists, and three of those five games happened to be made by the same developer. Again, this is tied to a power play. The lead character of the game, most often a male, is supposed to be seen as powerful and masculine. Having a woman oppose him would show that he is in some way weaker than that woman, something that may make the male gamer feel emasculated. Looking at roles in general, female characters tend to be given the weaker or supporting roles. Many times, women end up being the medics, healers, or otherwise supporting roles in combat-oriented games. This plays into the idea that women are motherly and nurturing. They're also often seen as mages or magic users. In other words, characters that are physically weaker and vulnerable. While female frontline fighters are not unheard of, they're definitely uncommon. The damsel in distress cliche is so, so common in video games. So much so that many games rely on it for its plot. We all know it, but just in case you don't, it boils down to this. Female character is kidnapped. Male character must embark on a dangerous, perilous journey to save her. Many games employ some aspect of this, whether it's their main goal or not. Once again, this is tied to the idea that women are weak and helpless. But at least these women are alive. That can't be said about all female characters. Another common plot device in video games is the woman dying to further the man's ambition cliche. To put it plainly, the male character will be reluctant to do something. Then the female character dies. Whether this be his wife, daughter, sister, lover, close friend, it's always the same. The man will then find his resolve and accomplish what he was sent to do, usually with a vengeance or a plan for revenge. Once again, this shows women as weak and powerless, and dead, all for the sake of furthering the man pain. Now, just because a game doesn't feature a female protagonist or antagonist, or uses the aforementioned cliches, doesn't mean that it's a bad game. Lazy writing? Yeah. But bad? No. There are games out there that subvert these cliches, too. In Uncharted, we see Elena saving Nate or getting him out of trouble more than once throughout the series. In Final Fantasy XIII, we see Lightning on a quest to avenge the death of her sister, Sarah. In Horizon Zero Dawn, we see Aloy being spurred on by a desire to avenge Ross's death. While definitely not common, these subversions do happen. Likewise, just because a female character takes on a supporting role in a game doesn't mean that she's a bad character. The only bad female character is one that doesn't exist. 2017 is already looking up. Only three months in, and we've seen fantastic female protagonists. We've seen fantastic female antagonists. We've seen female leads in promotional marketing for unreleased games. Hopefully, this will lead to an upward trend in the inclusion of female characters in video games.